We've really, you know, worked hard to find paint companies that we feel make the lowest toxic products available with, that still have really high performance. It's actually not that hard. We actually have about four latex um, paints that we offer. And um, probably one of my favorites is made by a company called Southern Diversified. They've actually managed to find a way to replace some of the petroleum solvents in their paint with a plant oil. I'm a great example of a harebrained idea that started in 800 square feet with me behind the counter and is now, you know, multiple stores and over 100 people and growing. take it from denim factories where they make blue jeans, so they collect no all kidding. the waste cotton. They're taking a material that would otherwise go to the landfill. It performs exactly the same as fiberglass insulation does, except that it actually has better sound insulating qualities. And the best feature is obviously when you're installing it, no mask, no gloves, nothing. There's uh, nothing toxic yeah. about this material. Blue jeans. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. It's basically thinking of the way we use things, the way we, we manufacture things, the way we dispose of things in a cycle where there is no way. It goes from being brand new to being old and used up to being brand new again. It's the future. Yeah, no, the recipe is basically just five things. They're all natural ingredients. Linseed oil, yeah. wood flour, wood resin, natural pigment, and a jute back. That's it. There's all those materials sounds like they come from nature. They are all natural. So from nature, the, conceivably, they could go back to nature. Exactly. So it's the bark. Yeah. It's not the wood. Not the this wood. surrounds it. Exactly. Yeah, and it comes from the forests in Portugal. All of the cork forests are protected in Portugal. And that's great because it provides habitat for some endangered species and that kind of thing. But it's also really cool because when they go and they take the bark from the tree, they end up, they dry it out and they punch the corks for wine bottles out of it. Then they take the waste cork, grind it up, and turn it into flooring. So this is an example of one company's waste, the wine cork stamping company. Mm -hmm. uh, their waste is nutrients for another part of the industry. Exactly. The trees are never cut down in the whole process of cork harvesting because they only take the bark. Does the bark grow back? The bark grows back. No kidding. Yes. Okay, I didn't know that part. I thought like you'd kill a tree if you took the bark. No, so, no, no. They only take a section of the tree of the bark at a time. So they take one third of the bark one time and then another third the next time they come and then another third the next time they come. So each section of bark is allowed to grow for nine years before it's harvested again. It's really cushy. It's extremely comfortable to stand on for long periods of time. So people really love it in their kitchens. They can stand on it for hours and their, their knees don't suffer and their backs don't suffer from all that from all that standing. Another really popular sustainable flooring option is bamboo. How come? Well, it's so fast growing. It's a, just a rapidly renewable resource. It's actually a grass. The longer bamboo is allowed to grow before you harvest it, the harder the floor is going to be. I see. They own every step of the process, from the plantation all the way to the basically distribution of the product. Um, that means that we know that the bamboo is coming from, from well-managed plantations. They're not actually clear-cutting tropical forest so they can plant bamboo. Yeah. They're, you know, they're being really responsible in terms of their, their Plantations. So you're selling this because it's a good flooring material mm -hmm. and, and also the chain going backwards from harvesting to the people who harvest it mm -hmm. is another example of sustainability ethic through your business. Exactly. This is actually made from um, paper that's been shredded and you can sort of see little bits of it here. So so, little chips of paper, little pieces. So shredded paper. Right, shredded paper. It's actually been shredded across the grain so the fibers are too short to turn into more paper. Feels like stone. I mean it's heavy. You can take it, chop it up into little pieces and throw it into your backyard and it will just biodegrade on its own. That's because this carpet is made from all wool and then the back is just um, two layers of jute, which is a natural fi another natural fiber made from a plant, and then just a really thin layer of natural latex. Which so this is down? actually a compostable carpet. Wow. As citizens, as people, as families, as business owners, as students, as 
teachers, we decide that we want to move in a certain direction, that's watched and people understand that and pretty soon you'll have industry and businesses trying to meet that demand. You'll have government officials saying, oh, my, my, my voters seem to be interested in that. If the people lead, the politicians will follow. The other really cool thing about this particular material is that if you happen to have it in your basement and your basement floods with, you know, if your if your um, washing machine explodes and you end up with a small flood in your basement, you can just take these out into your driveway, hose them off, dry them out and bring them back down and you're good to go. Interesting. Cradle to cradle. Mm -hmm. That means from the birth of the product to the next birth. It's not birth to death. It's right, not, it's birth to birth. It's not extraction manufacturing, production, sales, waste, waste dump. Mm -hmm. It's birth of a product to the birth of itself again or another product line. That's right, a totally sustainable carpet material. Cradle to cradle. That's <laughs> pretty good.